Let's talk to you a little later. Okay. Let's talk. Time for us to get started. That um, you all hear me all right? I see a lot of new faces here tonight. I see some older ones that have been by from time to time. We thank them for being here. And if you would, let's all stand and have the thanks. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. I'd like to, uh, before Mr. E.T. Uh, introduces uh, Mr. Tommy Castro to pray for us, I'd like for us tonight as, as we pray is to say a very special prayer for Sheriff Butler, Luke's Butler. He's very sick. And his family needs our prayers. And that's what it's all about. We need to pray for Sheriff Butler. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, and we'll do that when it comes time for our prayer time. And Tommy, would you lead us in prayer, please? Heavenly Father, we come to you this time and see this time and not Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to meet together, Lord, with your people, Lord God. And Lord, we just thank you for all the blessings you've given us all. All the homes that you blessed us with and gave here. And God, we ask you to sit with me. Be your will and be what you have it to be, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for the years that Sheriff Butler has served, Lord, and we know that he is troubled right now, Lord God, for the sickness, Lord. But we know your healing power can touch him. We know that you can comfort him and strengthen him, Lord God. And we just pray for everybody here tonight, Lord God, that we'll do what you have us to do in Jesus Christ's name. We pray. Amen. 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 We've got representatives from the state. We've got representatives from the water. We've got sheriff department people here and just a whole lot of different people here tonight. And what they're here for, they're going to explain some good news and maybe some short-time news or bad news. Don't know. But we're looking to hear from them in just a little bit. So as we move on along with our meeting, we'll have our, our treasurer's report. And the treasurer report is at 250. And the minutes from uh, the last meetings, we went over the beautification, the shootings, the vandalism, and also the uh, Rocket Shalindsey Road. That was the minutes of our last meeting along with you gave the report for that also. Sure did. I think we have something on the body east egg hunt you were going to talk about a little bit. Is that correct? Yes. Um, Mr. Lee, we are planning to have that one April the 16th. 16th. April the 16th. Saturday. Before the 6th up here, we have an Easter egg hunt and prizes for the children for our community. Larry, we're also having one here at Tabernacle called the Spring Fling uh, on the night. From That's the week before. What time? What time is it? 10 to 2. Okay. 10 Good. to 2. And be all kind of games. Get with Brian, uh, our audio man, and get Brian to post that on the Rockfish Volunteer okay. page. Thank you. I think it's already posted to different places, but we need to post that. That's good things for the community. Our recognition of special guests that are here this morning, this afternoon. If I make a mistake or something, like that, I just got out of the hospital with some problems and on some medicine like Carl <laughs> Pierce said he was on. So if I say something wrong, don't worry about it. I'll correct it next week. <laughs> <laughs> So I'd like to introduce Carlton, if he would, to come and take over and kind of introduce the people, introduce the people that are with him, and we'll just move right along with the meeting, sir. Thank you, Marlon. Thank you very much, sir. Let's get it nice to be with you tonight to uh, always come to the community on issues that we're dealing with. I'm just delighted tonight to introduce to those present with us uh, Mr. Chuck Dumas, 
And at first, I know it's a no choke way up. Your name? Matthew Kitchen. Matthew. Uh, I want to thank him, first of all, and thank uh, Brother Larry and this community for the stoplights that we have here. Out here is the efforts of Mr. Dumas, the one at Davis Bridge Road, after Mr. Dumas, and Larry pushing it, and I'm having to work with it. Uh, so we're just glad to have him with us tonight here in Rockfish, and what we let Mr. Dumas come and talk to you about the proposal. We've been out here on a couple of occasions, the roads up here on Rockfish and Lindsay, so it just let you know where we are as a state and what DOT can do, and maybe not a time period for tonight, but at least you can get it from the person who's responsible for our roads and our stoplights here in the state of North Carolina, Mr. Chuck Dumas. So, Mr. Chuck, if you would come, is that all right? Yes, sir. Am I ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Let's give him a hand as he comes. Am I in the way of something? Yes, sir. Not unless you're going to sing. Ah! Yes, sir. Father! You ready? Yeah, <laughs> Thanks, Representative Pierce. Uh, as uh, Representative Pierce mentioned, my name's Chuck Dumas. I'm a uh, division maintenance engineer. Uh, my office is in Carthage, but uh, Hope County is one of the eight counties that in our division that we cover. Um, Matt Kitchen is our district engineer. He is in Aberdeen, and Hope County is one of the counties he covers. His office handles driveway permits, uh, utility encroachments, they review developments and, and projects such as what we're talking about, going to talk about tonight at uh, Lindsay and Rockfish. So uh, Representative Pierce called uh, my boss, Division Engineer uh, Patrick Norman, back in the spring and asked if we could, if we could meet. And uh, we met with Representative Pierce, Mr. Chasen. Mr. Gregory. Yes, sir. So the, Mr. Gregory, folks from the chamber, and uh, looked at the intersection. And, you know, it's, it's an intersection we're familiar with, but uh, you guys voiced some concerns, you know, with safety, congestion, things of that nature. And we, we talked about a couple of different things. We have a transportation improvement uh, program project, which is on the books, but it is not scheduled to come until about uh, 2029. So that that's that's when that project's on the schedule. And I think you maybe posted, uh, did you guys post that cover sheet on, yeah. on your website? We did. We did. Yes, sir. So that kind of shows a realignment. It's, it's, it's called uh, U5707, and I think the description is uh, an extension of Gillis Hill Road comes, comes down to the west of the, the intersection of Lindsay, you know, where it intersects Rockfish. Family Dollar. Yes, sir. It's, it's a little bit west of Family Dollar and then uh, crosses Rockfish and then ties back into Philippi, you know, on, on down to the south. So, but that project, that project will, you know, provide some, I, I guess, a relief to that Lindsay Rockfish intersection. And, but it is, you know, still a few years down the road. So we looked at, you know, what are some things we could do maybe in the interim? So we evaluated the intersection for a signal. And, and you, you, got, you folks have probably, I'm sure everybody's been through the intersection out there. There's, there's a lot of, uh, I guess a lot of obstacles, maybe you might say just a lot of things to contend with out there. You got the intersection of Lindsay and Rockfish, then the intersection of Philippi is only, what, 100, 150 feet away? Yep. And then you got the railroad tracks in the middle. So. You have John Deere there, too. Yes, ma'am. Yep. So the anytime you have the, you know, a railroad tracks and a, a signal, you know, that adds a, adds a bit of cost, adds some additional components to the traffic signal. But um, anyway, the, what we did, we took traffic counts. We looked at the accidents, you know, the crashes over the last five years there. And our traffic engineers found that it met the minimum uh, warrants for installation of the signal. So next step in the process is to determine how much that would cost and then try to identify funding. So we, we did an estimate, but at this time we haven't identified funding. And it's, as I mentioned, it's a lot of obstacles to, or a lot of things to con consider with the installation of that signal. The railroad, we call it railroad preemption. That's basically allows the uh, signal to and the, you know, I guess if trains approaching, you know, you get the red on the signal. So it's it's just a way for the signal to to talk to the 
you know, to the uh, rail when a, when a uh, train car is approaching. So uh, that component alone is about $400,000, just, just the railroad preemption part. That's before you ever put in any signal and move any utilities or any of that, any of that, uh, those items. So that's basically where we are. We're still trying to identify funding. It does meet the minimum warrants per signal and you know we felt like that would be a, a pretty good interim measure at this stage and, and with the proximity of those two intersections you have to signalize both of them you know you have to signalize Lindsay and Rockfish and Philippi and Rockfish so at, at this stage if we could identify funding we felt like we would you know have enough benefit to because this it's, we're talking seven years before the project starts then there's a two to three year construction period so you know, could be nine years or so before the thing's complete with traffic on it and and starting to take some of the congestion away from that intersection. So that's that's where we are. I'd be happy to answer any questions or... I'd like to say six years ago, five, six years ago, we were told it was coming and they had the money for it. If they come out here every day, it's good. I live on the corner. I've already had a car come through my house. You look at my yard. We've been hit in the road there coming in our driveway. You can look in, the, in my yard right now where the cars have come through our hedges and whatnot. Right. And and I think, to me, if they can build Aberdeen in two years all the way to Aberdeen, because the women in Pinehurst is wanting to build for a big show they're going to have, why can't they build this one mile here? That's about what it is, one mile. And we were told probably six years ago they had the money and it would be done. Yeah, I... As far as the history of that, I know that that, uh, that project, you're talking about the whole project, the just, just realignment of, road. yes. Here, right here, yep. right, right here. Yep. And, and those, Matt may know a little bit more about the history, but I believe that project was, uh, we were hoping to, to do it a little earlier, but budget, budgetary issues and things like that, we've, we've had a lot of projects that have shifted in. we got 500 in, uh, more houses coming in down here. This corner can't take it. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it is congested. I, I agree. So I have a question. Yes, sir. I can respect the point of the construction of the road. No problem. But that is hazardous down there. You come out here and you sit, and those of you that stay in Rockfish, and I think you'll agree with me, you come out here and you sit. <clears throat> if you're going, making a right turn, there's a car coming Go make a left turn. They don't turn on no signals. They turn in front of you. If they're coming across the railroad tracks going south, they might go into Brock's yard. They have. Right. So you see what I'm saying? It is not safe. And that's the biggest problem that our community is asking why. I go all over Cumberland County, and I go all over Robinson County, and they have got similar situations just like this right here. And you see where they've got flashing red lights, caution, come to a complete stop. When those cars come across that railroad track going south towards Rayford, no signal. Sometimes they're running 50 miles an hour. You think they're going to jump the railroad track. We had one that hit us on the right-hand side you know, turning in our yard. It's, it's not it's safe. Right now, how many of in Rockfish can say it's not safe? It's not safe. No, no, no. That's right. He, it's not safe. It's not the uh, I got a question the sure. Well, the drivers don't care. Whatever you want with the drivers is what, I mean, well, I tell you what I do, ma'am. Here's what I do when I come for common yeah, courtesy, that's, that's and I know it's not. not that way the if you come in, you can make a right turn on a red there if it's clear. What we were looking at was adding a left turn on Rockfish on the Lindsay. To, well, what about off of Lindsay on the Rockfish? We did not. That's where your problems at. That, that's where the yeah. problems at. Yeah. Well, the thing, the thing about it, and I, you know, yeah, and I understand. I understand what you're saying. I understand all the engineering yeah. and the layout. Right, stuff. right. Because, and you, you understand the how congested it is and how long that turn lane would have to be to get somebody out of that queue to be able to make a left. Well, I think the turn lane, the turn lane would be right there. How about, uh, how about letting me finish? If you don't mind. Yes, sir. Now, see, a lot of people don't do that. When I'm coming south, when I'm coming up at the old store, I reduce my speed. I turn my signal on. 
My wife says, you don't have to do that. Well, I do do it. You know why? To keep from possibly getting hit. I'm not going to jump those railroad tracks running 45 and 50 miles an hour and go in their yard. Right. And that's what's happening. Right. And it's not it's not a safe. Not too many people do that. And I don't say I'm better than nobody. But it's, it's not a safe road to be on any time. And, you know, I think it's something that the state could look at more because there's, there's situations all over. That's like, and not and I'm going to change the subject a minute. If you go out on 401 at the end of Pittman Grove and you try to get on 401 and see what happens to you, you're going to have to make a right turn, go down the road, make a U-turn, and go back south. It's not, it's not safe. It's not safe down there. It's not safe for our community. And this is all about the safety of the community. It's not about me. It's not about nothing else. It's about the safety of the Rock Hill community. And I know y'all are doing all you can. And we appreciate everything you do. We, we were, we Let me make a statement and then I'll shut up. We were told, as some said a few years back, that the road was, just about, was going to just about float across there and it'd be all taken care of. The land was donated for nothing at one time. And then they decided to come back and they were going to take the land to do one on, so we said, we'll sell it to you then. Right. Then, the, then we're here now talking about 29 before we get any relief here. And there's a need. And that road at that time had $6,000 appropriated to build it across there. That should be with most of that road too, sir. The land's pretty well, not very bad Great. land to drive on. Right. And I get my question is, what happened to the, to the project? Well, it, any, I guess one of the things last couple of years with DOT in general, we've had we've had some budget issues. I mean, it's, it's you know you sure have just through the budget yeah, for two we, years. We have, and uh, you know we've had a lot of projects that were delayed and pushed back and, and things like that, and it affected it affected almost all of our projects. I, I wouldn't say all, but a lot. You know, a good majority of them. So, uh, you know, it's and this one's you know. I, I can look into that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that this one was you know, you right know, in you there can, with it. You can look so. into it, and, and you know, uh, that's fine. But our issue is it's not safe, whether it's the road that goes around and connects over, or whether there's something done right here. Right. As long as our community is safe. Right. That's right. all that counts. Right. And it's not safe. Well, and I'll, I will say, you know, when when we, we did pull up, pull up the crash yeah. data, which, you know, Fortunately, there were, I guess there were not as many accidents as we were possibly expecting, you know, just based on some of the concerns. So we, it, it, there were most of the accidents there. I guess most of the issue from when we were looking at it is congestion. You know, it's, it's long backups and, and things like that. And probably, and I'm sure, you know, a lot of times when things are congested, people maybe take a little bit, they, they may take a little bit more risk than, you know, because they've waited for a long time. But uh, the crash data showed about about 15 crashes over a five-year period. That's which is how many wrecks do you need for a five-year yeah, period to do the job? Now it's well, not a and it's not a it's it's, it's not a magic there's no magic number, but a lot of the crashes and I, what I was going to get to I guess was uh, you know we do consider safety in in some yeah. of the planning models and things too, but. I asked again, how can you build a road from Rayford all the way to Aberdeen, take 90 houses, three graveyards, two churches, and can't do this one mile right here? And you're going to do that by 24 so the women in Pinehurst can have their chin deep. And here we are, right here, one mile. One mile. Actually, that one's not going to be done until after 24. The, the clearing is going to start probably next summer, but the, the actual grading and construction of it is not going to start. And and one of the things, I mean, it, it is, we use, uh, you know, priority traffic, stuff like that to, to prioritize. And that one's, that one is coming, and it is is planned for, uh, for after 2024. So the women's open is coming this July or June, so. In the Pinehurst paper, they said they would have it done. Yeah, they're already buying up houses and stuff. Right, right. But yeah, they won't be they won't be done before the US open. The thing about it though is we need this one mile. One mile. I get it. We don't I, have to get out and make it ourselves. I get it. I understand your frustration. But I want to go back just to kind of back up on what Chuck talked about. We talked about the signals, okay? <laughs> 
And the question was raised, and it's a very good question. It, it's one we get all the time is, how many actions does it take? Right. right? How many actions does it take? Right. Yeah. And the reality is, when you look at signalization for intersections, we have, we have really have only one funding mechanism for, for a signalized intersection through our DOT, and that's when it, when it kind of hits up on our spot safety or our spot or our high impact, uh, not high impact low cost, but our, our HSIP reports as a, as a signalized area that's having problems with, with traffic, with accidents, that where a signal may help it. As Chuck was alluding to, there are 15, so that, the five year accident history was 15 accidents out there, but what we have to look at in order to qualify for a signal to get immediate DOT funding is you really have to have in a one year period. And I know that numbers don't matter, but you got to have what we call five correctable accidents by signal. Now, I think Chuck looked at the data before, and I think there was only two or three correctable accidents that a signal would have corrected in the last five years. We Most had of the people killed there. We've had all that done. I understand. All that, and all that factors in, believe me. But a lot of the accidents we're seeing, I think were a lot of rearing accidents, um, people stopping and getting rear-ended. That was the bulk of the accidents, and that's not corrected by a signal, unfortunately. Because you're, you're, in fact, those type of accidents are going to increase with a signal right. as you're yeah. rearing. Yeah. Um, so when we don't have that mechanism to go to our, our spot safety funding for a signal, because again, this, this small intersection in, in, in Rockfish competes with all the other intersections statewide. And believe me, you're not isolated. In fact, if you've got a, what is a procedure that's a dangerous intersection, but you can't put a signal there, sir, because it's five roads and a railroad track. I understand. No you can do a signal there, by all means, but as Chuck was alluding to, you're probably looking at close to a million dollars to get a signaling solution in. We want the road. We don't need the signal. We I, have yeah, the road. Yeah, unfortunately, the road is, is, is programmed through the STIP projects. Um, that's, that's all been programmed through your RPOs, your MPOs, and your local municipalities, your local government's in, input on them. Um, and we can only program and, and build them as fast as possible. And number one, what the funding allows, and number two is just how long it takes to get through all the documents and design, the environmental documents that comes with these roads. So now what it's, happened to the money you had to do it when you done it? was going to do it six years ago? They were, they were programmed probably six years ago, but the program for the funding was probably still way out eight or nine years down the road, unfortunately. That's not what we were told. I, unfortunately, I can't. I don't, yeah. I don't know what was told. I wasn't. I, I wasn't around when it was told, so I can't. Well, I live speak on for, the corner. That's why right. I get upset. Right. I've been. I, and I, I, I understand your frustration. I believe me. You I do. Can't I, put it in your own yard. Uh, yeah. uh, yes. Hey, well, hold up, real quick. She had her hand up right now. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So hold up, everybody, real quick. This guy come here. He took his time. They took their time. Everybody took their time to come in here. We got to be respectful of their time. We got. Six, seven people trying to talk over everybody. If we're not going to do it right, I prefer them to pack. If me personally, I pack up my stuff and I go out the door. Because y'all not going to sit here and just beat, this, beat him up. We got the guy here. We got to listen to what they're saying. If we're not going to listen to what they're saying, what's the point of coming? Because well, next time, we're not going to get him. And they can't change. And, he, and, he, and he's doing the best he can. And I've been sitting here listening, and everybody just it's chatting. Me because I live yeah, I, I know Miss Brock, but what I'm saying is, let's respect these guys' time. They came here to explain to us because they didn't have to come, and they came to explain something to us. But we gotta listen. We gotta listen. I understand everybody. I stay. I stay at Rockfish too. I understand the frustration. I understand the frustration. Let's be patient. I think Mr. Brock or Mr. Larry, if you raise, if you got a question, raise your hand, and one of them will recognize who's speaking next. From that, from this point forward, one person talk at a time. Right, we got one right here. Thank you. If we can't afford, uh, if it's not in the budget for flashing lights, why not just put up stop signs? We actually talked about that. The problem with the stop signs is it's, it's not conducive to an always stop. We do a lot of always stops around the Rockfish area, and they work out well. Unfortunately, the, the biggest problem here is with the proximity of the railroad, an always stop just isn't feasible because we, we can't afford to have people stop it on the railroad. You wouldn't that, have to be right on the railroad track. You could have a, a, a right before the railroad again, track. Again, but the traffic out there is backs up. It, we can't. We can sit, we can put up all the signs in the world, just like you alluded to. You know, we, you can put up speed limit signs all you want, but folks are going to drive what they want to drive. We can put up signs saying don't stop on the railroad, and folks are going to stop on the railroad. And, and we, it's just one of those things we don't want to put ourselves in that position where that's something major could happen there, where traffic backed up and folks have nowhere to go, and the train comes through, unfortunately. And we're, we're, held by the, you know, we're held very liable by the, by the railroad industry. So yeah. we, can't, we can't just go out there and say, hey, we're going to put up a sign, trust everybody to stop, because unfortunately, we got to think for the driver that's not paying attention. 
Well, I mean, it is it is a very oh. dangerous interception because I take my child to school every morning. I go to pick him up every evening. And I, there was one time I was sitting at the intersection and the car in front of me got tired of waiting and ran out and almost got hit by a school bus. Mm. How, how long is it going to take until we have children in the hospital because of this intersection? I, I understand, and I get that. I get that question. We get, believe me when I say it, I get that same question from 15 different people a day at different intersections all around. Every, every intersection we have out here has near misses every day. It's just the way the folks travel and, and maneuver. Um, and unfortunately, we have to really go on what we have is the hard data. And we, we, all we really have to go on to qualify for spot funding is the actual accident data and reports of what caused the accidents, what was the root cause, who was at fault, and how could it have been corrected. Um, and unfortunately, we, just, we, don't, we don't get that data from this intersection the way we get it from others that are just a lot more correctable accidents. <coughs> that can get that immediate funding, Thank or a little you, more sir. rapid funding. So. Thank you, Ryan. Um, you guys aren't politicians, so I'm not going to ask you a political question about things you can't change. I'm a project manager on the federal side, so I understand that that's how that works. Your, your hands are tied based on what you've been given to work with. I understand that. My question for you is about process. In the process of, of designing this plan, what steps have you taken to value engineer this, this project to keep the cost low so that it would be more of an, an incentive to the politicians who may want to fund it? <clears throat> we, yeah, as far as value engineering, I mean, the, I guess there's not a lot of opportunity for value engineering here. We've got, we're, we're looking at doing the minimum, the minimum length of turn lane, you know, that, that is, is feasible, which when you look at the configuration out there, there, there's a little bit of widening that needs to be done from left turn lane on to uh, Lindsay from Rockfish. It's, it's just going to tie into the three-lane section that's already there. So that's that's pretty much set. The uh, the other things, I guess, that we're looking at, since this is more of an interim measure, uh, I guess you could consider this value engineering. We're looking at using wood poles with signals instead of something like a, a metal strain pole, which is more expensive, uh, con you know, they're more durable, they last longer. But, uh, you know, this uh, once the project comes through in eight or nine years, you know, this, this may not be a warranted signal anymore because it's going to change the traffic pattern. So we've, we've figured on using, you know, wood poles, which are cheaper, a cheaper installation. Um, the, uh, you know, minimizing the amount of, of paving, it's got to be, it's going to have to be restriped, things like that. So you got some things that you got to do. But those, I guess those are the biggest things would be using wood pole signals instead of uh, a metal, a metal type pole with a concrete foundation and um, just minimizing, you know, the widening to what is actually, what we feel like is actually needed. Okay. So uh, those would be, if Matt, do you think of any other? Yeah, and I, I'm sure if you're referring to just the, the smaller, you're talking about the, the larger project in general. Uh, but, you know, larger, large, most of our larger projects in general go through a value engineering process. Yeah. Um, but, you know, those are, again, those are long-term developed projects. Um, they are, they are, usually they're done by outside mm -hmm. consultants. There's a, there's probably four or five review processes through those designs where they're reviewed by the DOT staff and our project managers, our engineers, our traffic guys. Um, it goes through a, a pretty rigorous thing by the time you go to conceptual plans, the 25% plans, to 65%, to 75%, to 90%, to the final design plans. There's a lot of eyes on it all the way through the process, and they're constantly being worked and changed as, as the project develops. Um, so there is value engineering. Now, we do have some projects that are actually sent out once designed and sent out for value engineering to see what, what changes can be made to expedite, to maybe make it cheaper from that standpoint. But at that point in time, it's not really making it cheaper to get it built quicker because the funding's already set and allocated certain years down the road. It's more about how can we, how can, instead of that project cost of $50 million, how can we get it down to $40 million and take the burden off of some of the other projects, you know, down the road. So, yeah, um, that's a good point. It, that's it, good. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. We have one question, Ms. Brock. The problem is you're all working about doing signaling there. If you take this road and it comes out on the other side of the General Dollar, that will take all the traffic going right towards Rayford on Rockfish and Philippi. It'll take it off of this intersection, half of it to go that way, and it'll take half of it off the intersection. Do you understand what we're saying? Yeah, okay. This one mile road is all you need. You don't need all these signals down here. Right. If you do that, all that traffic will be split. That's okay, Mr. Greg. We Mr. Greg, we're over here next. Okay, I'll yes. go back. Uh, yeah. When you're talking about the turn lane at the end there, 
if you come back to the mailbox where the uh, gaming place is, okay. past, past the gaming place this way, and cut a lane in there and widen from there down to the intersection. So that far back from what I've seen and looked at myself, that would be a perfect, uh, what would you call it, uh, split right there to zipper out. Because the right, a lot of the, lot of the, lot of the turns are right turns. Right turns. And with the traffic coming inbound from Rock Ridge proper to the railroad tracks, is if you got that turn lane there, that would help out um, with it turned on the Lindsay, and then you've got the other half <coughs> bypassing. But you're going to have to shift that uh, road just a little bit into the, the place there so that you got that turn lane because you got, like you said, you have the car, uh, railroad crossing. So that means moving that signal over if you had to widen the road. And I know state and federal land, they got that little dotted line there that you can't touch nothing yeah. until you get approval from the high sheriff as the old saying goes. Thank you, Mr. Gregory. We got one back here. Yes. Um, I, can I change the subject just a little bit? Um, who do I need to speak to or call? Um, neighborhood across the street. If traffic is coming, because I don't know if the witnesses is right, they're coming through our neighborhood and coming out this exit. It's terrible the traffic because the neighborhood there's a lot of children and there's a school bus stop right there when they come into the neighborhood. Can you describe who I need to speak to or who I need to call to sure. fix you, that? You give Matt a call. Uh, yeah, I, I'll give you a card. Okay. And maybe maybe one day when you give me a call, and we'll, I'll, be, I'll sit down at the computer, we can talk our way through it, and kind of, let me, kind of guide me through the, prod, on the problem on the map. Is your subdivision, is it, a, is it a private subdivision, or is it a state-maintained roadway? Uh, it's not private, right? Yeah, no, it's not private. So it's, it's a DOT maintained, it's a public yeah. DOT roadway? Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. Are you, okay, you you're in Hope uh, County, right? Uh, okay, I'm going to give you three more minutes. Go ahead and complete it up because okay. they, they're on a time frame. I, I understand that. So what I've described to you, is, would that work with a turn lane there? We can look at that. Certainly, uh, you're talking about a right turn lane on Lindsay yes, uh, as it approaches Rockfish. Yes, yep. okay. And uh, I think the, the thing that's going to be key, I, and that would be pretty easy. we got the traffic counts. We can we can look at the data and see how long it would need to be because you yeah, what I was kind of mentioning a minute ago, you know, if you've got a a, a right turn lane that's 100 feet and your left and your main and your through lane is backing up, you know, 500 feet, then yeah, only the people that, that are up there close are going to get into the right. Yeah. Are you asking? Let me back. Are you asking about a left turn lane or right turn lane? He's asking line? about a right turn lane on Lindsay on Road. On Lindsay Road and at Rock. Just to just uh, okay. just allow just some to get them pull off some good ones. I got you. Yeah. Are, are, are you through, Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, they, and they answered the rest of the other five questions I had. Okay, Mr. Mr. Boca. Good. Just, just real quick, because it's not anything I always like to stand up and talk, but I want everybody to hear me. Not on them. I, everybody got a concern, which has a, a legitimate concern down about the road. We already know 2029, in the meantime, we can ask the sheriff what can he do to help out with the traffic until 2029? Because they're not going to do their work until probably later on. But we got to fix something now. So, Sheriff, what can you do with your department to help out with the speeding, the all the so-called illegal stuff that goes on right at the traffic light. What can you do in the meantime to help our community out to ease congestion and make everything much safer at that road and where she stayed, talk, talking about people going through the neighborhood. I don't think do anything about that. Going through a neighborhood where kids are speeding through a neighborhood. What can you all do in the meantime to help alleviate some of that? Sure, it's on our agenda tonight, too. I think let's finish up with these gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, I'll address this. Let's, let's let our DOT finish. Yeah. Is there any more questions on the DOT? Let me go back. One more question. Kind of, let me follow up with her question real fast. Okay, do I think Mr. Mr. Bowles alluded to it. Do that. If it's, if, it's a, if it's a DOT road mm -hmm. and a public road, there's really not a whole lot I can do to prohibit people from using that road as a cut through. If it's a DOT road, if it's a private road, then you guys, as a, as a homeowner association, can take measures to 
either close it or however you want to, but if it's a, if it's a DOT public road, I really don't have any means to say you can't use it or Joe Public can't use it. Now, if they're speeding through the neighborhood, then I'll turn that over to the Sheriff's Department for enforcement there, but um, we could look at, we'll talk. I just don't, I don't want to give you false hopes, that's all. Okay. Yeah, if, it, if there's no speed limit signs, then, then by, by general statute, it's a 55 mile an hour roadway. And that may not be appropriate in your neighborhood, I'm sure. Okay, but we we'll, talk, we'll talk. One we'll more talk question. Can I, say, can I have one, one more? Please? Okay. This road right here that we're talking about is grandfathered in and so we went down to McLaughlin Lakes. It was there and people used it. McLaughlin Lakes shut it off on that side. So the road is really is already there. That one goes through the farm. That doesn't go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that go through. Okay. There you go. We got one more question in the back, yeah, or, or two more. That's, we're limited. Two more questions. That's it. With the traffic running through her yard and things like that, couldn't the state set up a, a barrier? You know, like you would on a bridge to keep people from running up on her porch and them being yeah, hurt. I mean, that was a whole lot cheaper it. than. You know what I'm saying? Just for precaution. But putting up a barrier, right? Well. It's something we would certainly look at, but barriers like guardrail, yeah. they they've got to meet they got to meet warrants, and they're really they're not designed for protection of someone else's property. They're for protection of the motorist that's traveling from a hazard that's out, you know, that's like a big drop off. That's typically where we put the guardrail. It's like a big drop off or going over like a, a lake or a pond or something like that. So. But we can we can look at it and see. I, I don't know if there would be any signage that would be appropriate or something like that. But we can we can take a look at that and, and just and just, just see. Safe, yep. So you you guys are right on the outside of the curve. If you're going towards Rayford, correct? Yeah. On the right yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah. I think Mr. Pop's got one more question. I got one question I need to ask. And we, as of speaking, we appreciate you gentlemen coming. We thank you for what you're telling us. If you got anything to tell us would enlighten anything anymore, we'd appreciate it. One thing that I would like to ask is, I own most of this land back here, and what if I decide to put a road through there? What do I have to do? You want to put your own road through there? I want to put a road. I want the state to take it over when I get done with it. You can put a road. There's a process for that. Um, it, it may not be. I, I would love to say you build the road, we'll take it over and maintain it for you, but alleviates congestion. Um, it's also got to serve another purpose from their standpoint of you building a private funded and we taking it over. It would almost have to be like a subdivision road. Um, it will be. And if there's if there's homes on it, then I and it's built to our DOT standards. Then if there's enough homes on it, then we can take it over. What about um, businesses? Businesses. I don't I don't know if I can count businesses, but I, as long as I have homes, I, we we will talk and we can see what we got to do you. to meet that threshold. So, um, thank you, sir. Good. I want to thank you all for coming, taking your time to come. Let's give them a hand tonight. I've got, I've got one more thing, too, before we get up. Yeah. Just, just a little bit of good news, I guess, because we probably delivered a lot of bad news tonight. Um, there was a discussion question about Pittman Grove Road of 401. Um, we do have a project coming this summer that will make that will take care of the intersection of Pittman Grove and I believe it's North Parker Church Road. Uh, both those at-grade crossroads will be converted to leftovers. So like you mentioned, anybody coming out of Pittman Grove or North Parker, Instead of having to try to turn left to go out into head east, east head westbound on 401, um, they'll be they'll be they'll be directed to make a right and go down about a third of a mile and have a U-turn ball to come around in. So those that's coming for those two intersections as well. If you all will hold just a minute. There's a man that I I failed to overlook, sir, right next to the wheelchair. Quick question for this gentleman right here. Moved here a year ago. Yes, sir. Went about there widening right fish road. Where can I find the most Right next to my house, right? And I'd say another one that goes right through my house. We'll give you a card. Yeah, second, and uh, and and we can we can get together with you and send it to you. Yeah, Matt's got. Call you. me, call me. Um, I'll be out of the morning for thirty. Call me Friday. Okay. What what I can get you to do is we've got the plans developed far enough that if you can give me an address, get your hat. I can pull up the exact plan sheet and give you exactly what's going on in front of your property. Um, you know, I can give you a public hearing map that was done several years ago, but. The road may have changed since then, so I'd rather give you something most up to date. Thank you all so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Give me, some, give me a couple of days. Give me a call. Or shoot me an email either way. As, as you gentlemen are leaving, you can see the concerns that our community has.
Yes, sir. And we're hoping and praying that things are going to work out. I want to say this before we get started. This is not a political function. This is about the concerns of the rockfish community. You've heard the concerns about the highway. You've heard the concerns about the intersection. Now you're going to hear from our high sheriff, Sheriff Virgil. He is coming to talk to us about the uh, things that are taking place at our community building. What he's going to do to try to prohibit this from continuing. He's come to talk to you about the watch commanders that are going to be stationed at our fire department. He's going to talk to you about redoing the side on the other side of the fire department where people will know that it's a substation for the Hope County Sheriff's Department. Now, everybody has voiced their concern, and I appreciate that. I'm glad y'all heard it from the people that knows what they're talking about. So we know. We just got to keep on top of it, and we'll keep complaining, and things will work out. But I want to introduce our Sheriff, Sheriff Virgil, and he's going to enlighten you about several things, and I think it will give you a peace of mind to know some things that he's doing to make our, and he wants to make our community, not only our community, but the county of Hope a better place to live. Sheriff Burley. Uh, you need to not fly, fly. I can project pretty loudly. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Sheriff Virgil. Uh, my name is Roderick Virgil, born and raised here in Hope County. I want to say it was, might have been maybe two months or so I was here uh, talking about a lot of things that we weren't to try to, that we were trying to implement in a short period of time uh, because of the growth, the growth in Hope County outrageous especially on this side of town um, one thing I had to understand based off of my uh, prior management experience is that there are there are a lot of, so you have wants and you have needs right and safety is safety is at the top tier of everything and so whenever I took office I said to myself you know there are a lot of things that I would like but what's needed um, also, you know that there's a there's a board of commissioners that we have to go through to to get those things. So uh, between me, uh, uh, my, myself, my chief. That first of all, before I go any further, let me introduce my staff because <laughs> that's so rude. My chief deputy Newton, uh, uh, Detective uh, Stevenson, uh, Watch Commander uh, Brunson, Captain Sanchez, uh, Sergeant Bettis. Uh, canine Swartz, and we have uh, Mr. Deaver from the State Bureau of Investigation from the back. Um, and if you guys have any questions for any of them, because I don't know their jobs, you're more than glad to hammer them away. <laughs> but um, but anyway, to get back on track, um, so you have wants and you have needs. We have a board that we have to go through, and so uh, myself, Chief, and Captain, you know, we often sit down and we discuss the needs of the county. Um, Unfortunately, this side of the county is heavily more populated than any other place in the county. So it's not that, we, that we're trying to neglect other areas, but you have to prioritize. If we only have a, and I'm just hypothetically speaking now, if we only have a $500,000 budget, then we have to sit down and say, okay, safety first. What can we do with the budget that we allotted from the county to make this community safe that's what we have to do and the reason why I'm explaining these things to you guys is because I know there are going to be some questions but I want you to understand the fundamentals of how and and and, and I apologize if you feel like I'm insulting your intelligence but I'm not trying to do that because a lot of people really don't understand how the system works there's a budget that we have so whenever we're trying to implement uh, safety in different programs there are only certain things that we're allowed to do to the next budget year. So what we do is we implement, we go after it, we come back, we have to action. Okay, did that work? What else do we need? Okay, we need more cameras, we need more gates, we need more police officers, right? So we budget for that. So we come back and what I do is um, I have all the commissioners, the county manager, you know, those important people to make those decisions to say, hey, you're gonna get more money. Every time there's a shoot, Every time there's a shooting in, into a occupied dwelling, text, paper trail, paper trail. Mm -hmm. 
So whenever I go before them, hey, sir, ma'am, the taxes that you've received, you know, now what can we do with the funding that we currently have or extra funding? I know this is what needs to be done, but how can we work together, you know, to better the community, the safety of the community? So that's how that works. So coming back down here to Rockfish, um, as far as I can remember, I don't remember a lot of, especially shootings taking place at this park. And I'm on the road all the time at night. I listen to the radio. And when I heard that, that did something to me. That bothered me. Because for the most part, you know, you got your known areas in the county. Let's just, let's just be transparent. You got your known areas in the county. But that's not an area. No park is an area for violence. But especially out here, because you, there's, you people walk out of here, they have picnics, they play, and you never hear tell of anything out here at the park. So whenever you start hearing about you know things and situations like that happening, we need to we need to reevaluate some things. So immediately, uh, whenever I heard what happened, um, I text the commissioner, "Hey, tomorrow we need to talk." Because this is this an issue. In the last four or five months, we've had about four or five teenagers homicides. I've I've been in Hope County all of my life. I've never heard of in that short of a time four to five people. We normally average about three or four homicides a year, but four to five teenagers, one teenager is too many, but four to five in three or four months, we gotta do something about it. You know, no, we can't, I mean, we're not there when they're pulling the trigger, but you know, you have to ask yourself, the common denominator is if you do wrong, we're gonna take you to jail, but there's another side to it. The other side is, what are we doing as a community to prevent it? Are we offering any type of program? Are we mentoring? So I have to reevaluate that stuff. You can put all the cameras and the gate stuff that you want, but if there isn't mentoring programs, um, uh, teenage whatever activities for these young people to get involved in, it's only going to get worse. And uh, 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 Mr. Mr. Deaver, when he gets up here, he's going to elaborate a little bit on the um, on, on the violence as far as like our teenagers. It's insane. It's not only here. Because I, I was feeling, I mean, I was feeling awful. He said, Sheriff, don't feel, I'm not, don't feel like it's only your county. Because it's all around Hope County. <laughs> but, you know, I, I have a heart for people. And especially when these, when these young adolescents are out here participating in drugs, <laughs> having guns or whatever. And a lot of them have a bright future ahead of them. But they don't realize what they're doing. Because they listen to the music watch all these TV shows, and they don't understand. Once you pull that trigger, and that bullet leaves that barrel and hits somebody, you can't take that back. It's not a game. It, this is this is the real deal here. So before I get into my soapbox, um, we, uh, because I get very passionate about that stuff, um, uh, myself along with the commissioners and the county manager will be decided to uh, do for all the parks in the uh, county. We're looking at gates, regulating the time, um, surveillance cameras, 100%, um, to where the uh, road sergeants will have access to uh, monitor those cameras. Um, because we only run about, it was five deputies whenever I spoke to you guys, right, last time, and I said that I was gonna work on Washington Manor. Now we're up to eight to nine. That's no extra funding whatsoever. That's just my brain, his brain, and Captain Sanchez, how can we do this? How can we, how can we rob Peter to pay Paul? How can we make this work and show that it's working so whenever we go back up before the board, sir, ma'am, this is what we're doing. It's working well. We need extra funding to keep it going. Um, so the cameras, the gates, um, I'm thinking that that's going to happen. The cameras, well, I shot a doubt that's going to happen. The gates, we're talking about that because it's a gray area because they want people to be able, if you want to go out and walk around the park at 8.30, 9 o'clock at night, you know, you should have that freedom to, but there's a reality to it. You have bad people out here. Let's just be honest. You know, you should be able to leave all your valuables in your car with your car on the light. 
But the reality of it is you have bad people. Go ahead. Uh, just a question from, from the online community. Um, if a citizen feels like there's an increased amount of crime in their neighborhood, what steps can they take to contact you and say, I think we need a greater police presence in my area? Okay. What can they do? Um, so so we, have a, um, we have an online tip form. Um, I would personally rather for that individual to come down to the sheriff's office and let's just have a face-to-face -face because we only have about seven to eight officers on the road for the most part, including a, a detective, about nine. Polk County is huge. You're talking about including the city limits of Rayford. You're talking about 70,000 people. So we need more community involvement. And trust me, starting in April, we're going to be wide open with the citizens of Polk County. So I would recommend that individual to come down to the sheriff's office. And because, I mean, you can fill out a tip form all day long, but some things require an in-person conversation, some dialogue back and forth and brainstorm. So I would recommend that individual to come down to the sheriff's office and let's talk and see if we can come up with a game plan. Anybody else in here? Mark, you said Gaiden. Do you, I mean, it's already Gaiden. Well, you well, the parking lot? Well, so, well, right, so like the uh, the entrances or whatever, mm -hmm. it's right, like a right. gate there, right. So it would be locked at a certain that's what that's what we're talking about. We're not 100% certain yet, but for, for the most part, yeah. Because you can't stop, you can't stop crime. You can just only de saturate it and deter it, right? <clears throat> well, officer presence, barriers like fence gates, um, surveillance cameras. But people now are just so crazy; they're just doing, they're just doing whatever. The only thing that's really helping now is um, is officer presence, this saturated neighborhood. And we can put all the deputies we want on the road, but then guess what that does to your tax? <clears throat> so what we're doing, my goal is to try to maximize the resources that we have now. I mean, completely exhaust them and put more deputies on the road, put more programs in place. We want to be reactive and proactive. You just don't want to be one or the other. You want to be both. Reactive because there's a, there's a call for service and proactive try to prevent it from happening, right? Uh, why not have a, a youth athletic league to the sheriff's department for these kids, give them something to do? So you've been in my head for the last two weeks, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because that's what we're going to do, like, April 16th, we're going to have a mentor day. Uh -huh. We're going to put it out. I'm pretty much really putting this out, y'all. So don't owe me to everything because we're critiquing it. But April 16th, um, we're going to have a mentor day for uh, teenagers, male and female. Fishing, uh, go over gun safety, get them horseback riding, get them vision boards or whatever, and we're going to build, we're going to start building relationships with our youth in the community because what's happening now is a lot of youth, they're starting to talk about certain things. Mm -hmm. After the crime is committed, they see that, man, it's police is everywhere in our neighborhood. And people start to talk, they get very afraid, right? Because you have that. Uh, Father to son, I had a, a father to call me today because his son was potentially involved in something. He said, we want to come and talk with you about a certain situation. And that's what we need. We need parents' involvement. Mm -hmm. We need to sit down and we need to talk about things because you'll be surprised what you find out mm -hmm. from the youth. They'll tell you everything. You'll solve all your cases with some of these guys. There should be a follow-up. Yeah. Uh, I played baseball in my life. Okay. Uh, I played in the minor leagues. Was arguing. Okay. And I'm willing to help out any way I can. Absolutely. Uh, I'm not totally healthy, but I'm willing to help. There's going to be a softball game at the end of those events on April the 16th okay. with, the, uh, with the girls and the boys. And this is something that we're going to try to do maybe every two months um, because it's all about you guys, you can have programs in place in the county for the youth, but if you're not consistent, you can forget it. You're wasting your time. You just can't have one program. No, well, and then you? that's what a year, and then that's it. it. We need to have consistency, but it can't be the same people. It takes a village. It takes the community involvement. How about it's starting a whole community. league? And we Instead of just having softball games, having a whole season. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. okay. We can definitely do that. I'm going to hold you to that. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, if you tell me something, I'm going to burn your phone up. <laughs> I got you. All right. <clears throat> First off, for the job you're doing because I see a big difference. Thank you so much. But Thank you. I understand 
and the killing we had up here was from out of the county. It was from out of the county. Thank you. It was from out of the county. Whole county has a reputation, folks. I've been a reserve deputy here for about 11 or 12 years, and a lot of dope dealers, they was like, mm, not the place. Come through, we, <laughs> it's not the place. Um, so anyway, back to the park. Um, so yeah, the park issue has been addressed. That's something that we're working on. Um, but for sure, you're gonna have a camera out there that's gonna be monitored by the sheriff's office and whoever the state deem necessary. I would also um, like to see if one of you guys or whatever, maybe give one of you guys access to it so you can have monitor, right? It yeah. takes a community, it takes a village, right? So if we're gonna have a camera out there and if we're not around, then what better person to have access to something like that than some of your citizens here, your key people here, right? So I'm gonna look into that. Look into that. Um, so uh, what else? The, the, the traffic, the congestion. Unfortunately, we can't, the problem here is congestion, it's volume. It's not, it is speed, but it's more so congestion. That's what we can do about that. Um, what we can do, and my officers, they're in rock fist a lot. They sure are. They, they burn up this place. <laughs> they, they, they burn it. Nobody want to drive through it because my officers, 92 traffic stop, rock fist road, Glacier <laughs> Church. I was like, good God, he lives down there. But nobody should be speeding down there. But the fact of the matter is, the, 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 only, the only solution for that is DOT roads or whatever. Um, but um, my guys, we will continue to come out and, and enforce some speed, uh, doing what we do. Uh, we have a radar trailer that we've set up in several places. We only have one right now. And so we gotta kind of balance it out. You know, I, I can't just leave it here. We gotta put it throughout the county and show that we are enforcing traffic as well as other crimes that are committed. But um, uh, we're doing the best that we can. Considering, considering doing a good job, mm -hmm. we're doing the best that we can. Um, so, good. yeah, I might be jumping ahead. You might. Cover no, you're it. fine. You're fine. But what is the uh, status of these gambling halls in lieu of the latest Supreme Court ruling? They're done. Are they? You, you should see. You should see nothing else. They're shut down. Woo! Okay. Although I will tell you, go ahead, Chief. There is a state. So right now they are able to file, they're trying to file an injunction. Right. So what I've seen over my many years of doing this, we take them out, three days later we give them back, it could change tomorrow. Mm -hmm. right. And that's the problem with it. Okay. It's always been a problem with it. Um, I've been dealing with these since probably 98. They got real bad in the early 2000s as you know. We haul them out. Get a court order, have to give them back. And so the biggest one we did, they did it in this county too. Three days later, we had to give all the machines back. And the problem is storage. But right now, they can't be open. Tomorrow morning at nine o'clock, they can be open and you can call us all you want. We're gonna go, we're sorry. Nothing we can do. Theoretically, but not actually. You're saying they're closed down now until another court rule. Yes, but they had today, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. till this afternoon at five, whatever time, jurisdiction, whatever that goes, right? But they had a chance to file their grievances. We haven't heard anything yet, but we could hear it in the morning. I got one quick question. Maybe I, I mean, I don't go to them anyway. Maybe, I, maybe I'm a old head that's got to ask this question. And I asked this question once before, because I heard everybody clapping. Everybody that's clapping in here, you're going to go in Shell gas station tomorrow. You're going to go to Walmart tomorrow, or one day. Now, if anybody can tell me, what's the difference in the game? And I guarantee you, some of us in here, hold on up for just a second. Some of us gonna go buy a lottery ticket tomorrow. Some of us gonna drive out and fly to Las Vegas one, one, one day of the year, one day. 
And what I've learned from a biblical teaching, gambling is gambling. And if you ask God about gambling, because I, I know we deal with some religious people in here. And if we ask God about gambling, God going to tell us there's no difference between buying a lottery ticket gambling and pulling a slot machine gambling. Because at the end of the day, you got to answer to God about it. So we can debate about what gambling is. But you cannot put this way. You cannot cheer for one thing, but you don't cheer for the other. We, 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 we kind of a little bit confused on this gambling thing. And I'm not, I, I don't go in on, I'm just being honest with you, I don't go in on. But I just, I just don't see the difference in gambling. You know. Here's the question I have. To yes, ma'am. start off with, they're not supposed to be within a thousand feet of a church. We got this one right here in front of our tabernacle. We got this one up here in front of the Christian school. We got the other one down right at Rockfish. The three of them here within a fourth of a mile of each other. And the one down at David's and Brick. Yep. And oh. Shell's gas station and the, the, the down at David's and Brick's dollar store and the new gas station is right there by the church. Okay. And hold on, hold on for just a second. And it's right there by the church. So we, just because of the, just because we sell the quarter mile or six miles, that makes it better? No, there is a coordination. Okay. No, I'm, just, I'm just asking, does that make it okay, better? Hold, 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 hold up one minute. Go ahead. The thing is not necessarily the places themselves. It's the people they bring in. That's Amen. what I mean. I addressed that Amen. question today. That's the problem. The I've the been here in Rockfish for 55 years, and the elders in the area, you got all these little drug heads and punks coming in here, robbing our elders, beating them yes. up, stealing from them. Yeah, yeah. There was a, um, there was a. Um, oh, I thought you had your hand up. Um, so, um, so actually, um, I had a lady. She addressed the, she addressed the same. Yeah, I like to look at people when talking. Yes. Um, I had a lady address the same thing, and you're one hundred percent right about everything you said. But the answer is what she said. It's not so much because let me tell you something. You do whatever you want to do with your money, right? But there's 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 a time and there's a place and a way to do things. Amen. And so, and she said a mouthful. It's not so much of the act of what's going on because you can't force religious beliefs on anybody, right? But it's 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 the atmosphere that it sets, and and we get a lot of that. We get a lot. So, convenience stores or whatever, in and out traffic, right? But a stationary place. In a nice neighborhood where you're gambling, it's going to bring drugs. It's proven. People don't die here and wow. if you gamble homes or whatever. And it's not appropriate in certain places. So that's why there are limitations. It's not that, you know, we all mess up and do things that we shouldn't do, but we got to use wisdom and be considerate of our environment or whatever. So it's not so much the act of it, it's just the, the, the crowd that it brings. Now, I got a question. Okay. Now, and, and, you know, yeah, I, I, I'll just like play devil again. That's fine. The, the three things that have been up in Rockfish, what's the amount of, I, I mean, because I'd be sleeping at 8 o'clock. What's the amount of crime that each one of them have brought into Rockfish? I, I'm just asking for it. Drug, crime. A drug activity. Now, I got a question. So, when they take those three things out, let me hold, 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 no, drug act. That's that's why I was about yeah, to get you on. Drug activity at that specific location. So go ahead. No, but what I'm saying is, what's the what's the what what is you all's crime rate at those facilities right in Rockfish? Is it high? No, is it's it, not. So so I'm not, not just I'm asking. It's not. It's it, not high. Now I got another question. Okay. What's the crime rate at the Shell gas station? Is it high? 
So I can't, no, I, 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 can't, yeah, I can't tell you the crime rate, but I can tell you the type of crimes that are committed at the Shell gas station. Yeah, but see, but I'm saying, no, no, the reason I'm asking that, see, I'm not, I'm not being a, I'm just asking that question because a lot of people, because a lot of people, we, 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 we distinguish because we say, well, a lot of crime come with that. And that's why we, we, we always got to use the data points and we got to pull out the, 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 the the police report sheets to see what is the, the amount of crime that's been happening with those three. And I, I don't, I'm not speaking up for the people. I just wonder what's the crime being for those three um, gambling you stations out there. Okay, okay. Go ahead, my chief. It's like this. We look at everywhere, not just here. So, maybe nothing's happened here. But I don't know, a lot of these other places, potential. Right? right? right. That's the bottom line. People come in, and I, let me say this. We busted a place over in Walmart about a year and a half ago. I don't know if anybody, you were here. We took about 35 people out of there, correct? Y'all see that? Two were from this county. Potential. It's the potential of what could happen. You at the stop sign, right? I remember many years ago, y'all may remember this, a uh, young kid, this is way back in the 90s, that's how long I've been around. Trooper son pulled up to the stop sign down at Gillis Hill. The guy stopped in front of him and they robbed him and stole his car. Some of you may remember that. They weren't from this county, but he was. Potential, because you start bringing stuff in from out of county, you don't know what you're getting. So what the sheriff is, Looking at the potential. The potential of getting robbed, somebody getting killed in these places, it's happened on other ends of the county. Why can't it happen here? We don't know these people coming in. They're coming in from out of county. They're not us. Okay? That's all I got to say. Yeah, yeah because what, um, to, 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 kind of, to kind of go back um, on, on what, and what you're saying, um, so, 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 yeah, so crime is crime. But then you have different types of crime, mm -hmm. and um, depending on what you have, so certain things invite certain types of people. Mm -hmm. um, and and like you were saying at the shell at the shell gas station, you know, yeah, you have crimes there, but they're like misdemeanor crimes for the most part. Um, at these gambling joints, you have you have felony crimes, yeah, but they're more like drug related. So we know what comes along with drugs. And we know that a lot of people that aren't working now that can work, they know that's a money spot. And so if there's a money spot, then we need to go where the money is. So it's, it's potential. It is. But I, I understand completely what you're saying, but it's more so the potential. Because we can't shut the gas station down. The gas station will keep rolling. But, but, but I'm saying that I just felt the word potential. Right. And we keep saying potential. And those guys, these, these, these games been opened up for how many years? Can anybody give me a number of years? About two or three years out here. About three years. Mm -hmm. Three three years off and on, closing off and on. Out of three years off and on, I hadn't, and I stayed right here by the way. I stay on Barefoot Road. I hadn't woken up in the morning and said that these three things was filled with crime today. It's, it's something happened that day. And I understand potential. But the question is, we said what well, happened way over there. It's not the building itself. Listen, hold on. Listen, hold on. Listen, hold on. Listen, hold on. Let me make my point real quick. When we say people, do everybody that goes to these gas stations is from Rockfish? You've got a lot of people, Mr. Bowles. I know, but that's not from Rockfish. You've got a lot of people that is coming out of Cumberland County, and Cumberland County does not condone the game out. They come out of Cumberland County, Robinson County, and they come to Rockfish. I think I think what would help you out a lot, out of sight is out of mind, right? There's a lot to go on right up under your nose that you don't know about. There's a lot. Amen. There's a, a lot. There's, there's, <laughs> I, I, let me help you out. There's a lot to go up under your nose. Yeah, there's a lot. You, and just because you get out on your front porch and you look over there, 
and you don't think about crime as just a nice little dove while it's sitting there, I promise you it's a lot more that had went on when you were asleep because you said you go to bed at 8, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. So it's a lot that goes on until you sleep. But no, I totally understand what you're saying, and I appreciate the devil's asking because I like people like you. I like going back because you make me work. But anyway, uh, go ahead, sir. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Because she had her hand raised for a while. Yeah, I mean, if that was it, just the building. Right. You know, it's not the building. I have to disagree with that. Because she can't be there 24-7. No, I, I know, but I'm just saying the kind of people you bring in. And, and there's nothing wrong with gambling. If you want to gamble, gamble all day long. I don't care. You're doing someone else. Go to Vegas. I'm going to gamble. Yeah. 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 Go to Vegas. 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 What we have to realize, is, especially in the Rockfish community, you're expecting, like between like Westgate and this place, yeah. you're expecting, oh my God, it's going to get crazy. So more people, more problems. That's right. You know, and we're, and we're going to do the best that we can. That's why we have to be proactive right now and not wait for something to happen. We have to foresee and pray to God nothing happens, but we have to be on our toes. We have to have meetings like this and talk about, hey, you know, what's, what's the next game plan? What are we going to do? We I think have we have two more questions for the sheriff. Two more questions. Uh, okay. I asked one of your deputies one day about the ordinance thing. You guys do, do enforce the ordinances. So if the gaming place is open after 12 and open before 8, you guys should go in and do protocol of whatever is required, correct? Correct. Okay. 2 o'clock, 2.30 in the morning, we had a head-on collision over there in front of the uh, Barefoot Road area. Because there's a TNA operation over here, two drunks get head on right there. I pulled up there in a fire truck and we had 15 cars and 20 people out there in, the, in there that was in that building at that time of the evening or morning, direct helping to direct traffic through their thing. So I told one of the deputies before you come on board, I was, what about the ordinance? Okay, we got two of them, one of the time zones plus thousand feet we as a uh, chamber of commerce went to the commissioners and wanted it a thousand feet property line to property line so which that would take care of the tabernacle and the um school god uh, church of god right there at the time okay they went back in the back room and put it brick to brick so that way there's a little play there I measured over there at the Christian school to the gaming area across the street, 169 feet. Now that thing got open, and I don't know if it's closed again, but I measured it and I called Robert Farrell and told him it was a violation. So I'll just put that down on the property owner and let them know. Where does the ordinance and you guys lock up together to take that? And I'll probably keep Debbie will answer that one. That you see where I'm going? Right, absolutely, I do. I do. Okay, one more. So I remember you saying something about the uh, the gambling halls, right? And there being a lot of drug activity there. Who's to say that that drug activity won't now spread out to the rest of the county? It will. I'm not going to sit up there and tell you a lie. It, it's going to spread out. It's going to. I mean, that's just. You're not going to decide. I give you this situation. So we had a lot of gun violence in a certain area in the county, right? So we saturated it. We did everything gone now, right? Not even a month it moved to another location because they're teenagers, right? They don't have anywhere to go. They don't have driver license. They just moved to the next location. And so that's why we have to have more community involvement because we have to get the parents involved. We have to mentor these kids, those that the, the parents that are 
cooperating with the police, social services, or whoever, to try to mentor and teach these kids that you're going down the wrong path. Because because with law enforcement, the only thing we can do is divert, divert, divert. You're not going to stop crime. You're not going to start drugs. You're not going to stop drugs. The only thing that we can do is divert, divert, and try to save the ones that want to be saved along with the help of the community and their parents. Because we got to be realistic about this. You're not going to ever stop drugs. You're not going to stop gun violence. We have to try to mitigate it the best way that we can, and that's working together. And, 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 and praying for our community and for this world. That's the only way we're going to get through this, is working together. So, All of us. So what you saying? One more question. Can I get the answer? Yes, sir. So, okay, no, I thought I was... The bottom line, the question is, on the ordinances, where do you guys fill in and shut these places down for being in violation of the ordinance? So we shouldn't have to worry about an ordinance now because they shut down. Okay, so I'm saying if they pop back open. So if they pop back open, we have to enforce the law, we have to enforce the ordinance. So you can shut them down then because they violated the ordinance? If they violate the ordinance, then we follow the ordinance. Okay, that's okay, that, that's okay. all yeah. I did. Okay, that ends our question with the okay. sheriff. I think the sheriff want to introduce another one of his guests. Okay, so um, so the Rockfish Watch Commander, um, Sergeant Bettis, would you come up, please? Yeah, this is this is our master K9 handler. He's awesome. And guess where she lives at? Rockfish. Well, she'll never get asleep. Right. Um, Staff Sergeant Bettis, I've uh, been in law enforcement now for 25 plus years. I was in Fayetteville until I came to Hill County. Decided in my last couple of years I want to work in my community because I'm a big I'm big on community. Um, Sheriff, Chief, and Captain, they brought me over. Thank God, <laughs> and are allowing me to build up the canine program. So what my goal is. Rockfish, because I'll, you'll you'll see me at the fire department. I'm going to try to get out there as much as I can. Me and Lieutenant um, is we're going to do a lot more training with our dogs in the in the community, and that's where we need you to come out and let us know. Hey, you know we have this house. These people just moved in, and they're not. You know, we just we just have some issues going on. Let us know, like like the sheriff said, and we'll get out there and we'll actually go out there and do canine training. Um, like when I was in Fayetteville, that's exactly what we did. We put up a, a daily um, write-up to the chain of command, letting them know, hey, what areas do we need to concentrate on, and I'll, we'll take the team and we'll go to that area. We'll saturate that area with the dogs, gets us out with the community, we also get out there with the kids. Kids love the dogs. They may not like us, but they love the dogs. We, we do um, any kind of community event that you may have, call the dogs out. We, we train these dogs to love people. They're not vicious. Only when we give them that word are they vicious. Other than that, we want the dogs in the community because they're, they're your, ultimately they're your dog. You pay the taxes, you're paying for these dogs. Um, so we just need to know, hey, you know, I'm having problems in my neighborhood. Would you mind coming over? I know I've talked to you before at the, Rock, at the fire department. Hey, well, let me know. We'll come over there. He's offered up to, hey, you can stop by my house anytime you want to. I don't care what time it is. So let us know because we're trying to build up the canine program. The sheriff's been awesome. We're, we're about to get a bloodhound, just so the Rockfish community knows. So you're going to see me a lot around with this little bloodhound running around. And we could use your help. Anywhere we could, you want us to train, uh, there's areas that you don't want us in, please let us know. But we want to be out there for you. We're gonna, the more we're out there, communicate with you and you're communicating with us, the more we can get back to our department and help you as a whole. I work a two to two, um, and I'm going to be at Rockfish. I have my office in there. They were nice enough to get the office in there. So if you have any problems, come over there. If I'm not there, tell, ask them where Sergeant Bennett is, and I'll be there in a heartbeat. Well, do you have a dog with you? I don't have one now. I'm picking her up April 1st, as a matter of fact. <laughs> okay, but I got a Schwartz back here. He's got uh, a dog, too. And if you want to meet her, she's great. Feel free. 
and you could bring her in if that or whatever you'd like to do. But uh, yeah, I would like to, I, I, please let us know. That's what we want to do. That's what we're here for. And that's my goal is we're, we're beefing up K9T. And they're not there just to go out there and bite people. They're not. It's part of the community thing. We want to clean up, help clean up the drugs, get the guns and such like that. But we need your help. Let us know. Hey, come to our neighborhood. Hey, come in wherever. We'll be there. Yeah, we've, we've added since, let me see, in the last two to three months, we've added two canines, two yeah. additional canines. What's your total you have now? Six. 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 Mm -hmm. We went from four to six. In the last three months, we've added two additional canines. So we're, we're, we're moving. Thanks for the help of you guys. We are moving. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. He's the other watch commander. I want him to uh, have, some, have a few words. He's at Westgate. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm not much of a talker in chief, I always say. <laughs> what, man? I just, I just stay to myself. But, um, and he's sharp, too, y'all. He's a little pressed with iron. <laughs> um, I'm a uniform man. Um, but um, Mark's the 19th, I have 23 years in. I was at Spring Lake before I came here. Um, so I was on the tour with uh, the sheriff. Um, asked me to come back. Uh, the captain and the chief have been real good since I've been there. Um, so I've seen them off and on. I wasn't there. Uh, I'll be at Westgate. I'll be there. So if anybody need me, um, just call and I'll come back. I'll take care of probably whatever the situation has. Um, I work 2 to 2, uh, 2 p.m., 2 a.m., so if I have to stay over, I'll stay over, but, you know, I'm there. So if anybody have any questions, contact me. And, and, the, and, these, were the, and these were the two watch commanders that I talked about in the previous meeting that we had. So, yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. I'll get you. I'll get you. Okay. Oh, yeah. You got another game? So, um... Because I don't want to, because y'all, I'm going to, I'll hold you until 12 o'clock talk. I've talked all the time. I'm a virgin. That's what we do. But no, so um, I want to hit, I want to hit two to three key things. Um, when I was here, the last time I was here, I talked about the things that we were going to initiate. So, so the canines, the master canine handler, the watch commander. Um, there were two other sections that we developed. The violent crime joint task force. Um, and as Sergeant uh, Clark and Corporal Stevenson, those, so that section is strictly dealing with violent criminals, guns, gangs, something that we never really had before here. Um, again, need Chief and Captain Sanchez sitting down, what can we do? How can we mitigate some of this stuff and take a lot of the workload off of our uh, major crimes unit? Well, let's develop a, uh, a joint task force that works with the Bureau, that works with ATF. And so um, so that's what that section entails. And that's where uh, Mr. Deaver comes into play. Could you come up here for a minute, please, sir? Um, this is Mr. Meech Deaver from the uh, State Bureau of Investigation. We are, we are working very, we are working very, very closely with the, uh, we're working very, very closely with the feds now um, at the, Possibly in the next month or two or whatever, we will have hopefully a, a, a bureau guy at the Hope County Sheriff's Office um, because we work really well together. Um, we have a young HC, but we're growing. We're getting more seasonal things going in. And together, as we work together, we put our brains together with the resources at the state level, at the federal level, we can go ahead and put some of these people behind bars that need to go because of the crimes that they've committed or whatever, and also we can help educate ourselves from a lot of guys that work at the state and the federal level because they operate on different platforms. We all have different uh, things that we do, but together we're strong on it. So I'll let you handle that, Rick. Um, thank you for having me. Really appreciate the hospitality. But um, again, I'm Mitch Deaver. I'm the special agent in charge of the Bureau's uh, Fayetteville office, which is the Southeastern District. We have nine counties in our district and that includes Hope County and uh, 
I've been with the Bureau since 1998. And uh, the SBI and the Hope County Sheriff's Office has always had a really good working relationship. Um, what I want you to understand is, is that not only are you citizens of Hope County, but you're citizens of the state of North Carolina. So not only are you paying the salaries of those who work for the Hope County Sheriff's Office, you're paying the salaries for those of us who work with the SBI. So, the Sheriff's Office customers and my customers are the same people. Fortunately, um, Chief Newton and I have known each other since way back. And you can see how we both kind of ended up the same way over the number of years we've had in law enforcement. But, um, you know, he, he thought of me when, unfortunately, Pope County had a rash of violent crimes involving young people. Um, I've got to say, David Newton is an individual who's pretty steady. He, he has seen a lot. And when he called, he said, thank you for answering the phone. I need help. I need help right now. Um, it wasn't that they couldn't handle it. It's that they needed more people. Because unfortunately, I'm going to tell you right now, in the SBI Southeastern District, the violent crimes are, are spiking. And it's our babies killing our babies. We've got to get a grasp of this. And the way we do this is by the mentoring programs, the interventions, community policing, the community and law enforcement working together. Law enforcement agencies working together. That's what it's going to take. David gets us in. We start talking. The sheriff, him and I just met for the first time uh, probably four weeks ago. And we started having direct conversations and about how we can help each other and more importantly, how we can help our citizens of Hope County, our citizens of the state of North Carolina. And where we have always worked certain things together, the sheriff has broadened that. I will tell you just two weeks ago this Friday night, they had an incident. The sheriff's office did. He calls us out to assist them. Myself and five agents come out. Before we finished that one, we were, my guys got left there, and I went and helped them with that, which led us all the way into another camp. But here's the thing. If we're not working together like that, I can't even fathom how they'd have handled it because while we were out on the second one, which led us into Cumberland County, there was another one coming in. So when you look at these folks that are working with the sheriff's office, let me tell you, you hear them talking about working two to two, and you talking about detectives working eight to five. I can tell you their day was probably pretty much like mine. I hit the ground running that Friday morning at 8 o'clock. I got home about 6 o'clock, spent a little time with the family at 8. He calls at 11 o'clock. We hit the road. I come back in at 4 o'clock. And then he calls me again, and I'm thinking it's follow up something else. No, it was another situation. So when he tells you he's going to burn you up on the phone, he's not lying, folks. He will call. But we appreciate the opportunity and the thing is communication, communication, communication. You know, my daddy always used to say, if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. And if the hair on the back of your neck standing up, God gave you that for a reason, call them. Call them because it, you, you've got more eyes and ears and more at stake and more thumb on the pulse of things here in Rockfish than the Hope County Sheriff's Office or the SBI.
because you live here. So, you know, give us the chance to help you. I can tell you we are full court press on this. We are committed to this. And I just appreciate the sheriff giving us the opportunity not just to expand our working efforts together with, between our two agencies, but the offer to come and speak with y'all tonight. And if anybody has any questions, I'll take those. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good evening. I don't know. I just believe in God and what I'm going to do. And um, he's going to kill me. <laughs> Chief, would you stand up for me, please, sir? He's going to kill me. <laughs> he's going to get <laughs> Hey, listen, so, so I believe in being 100% transparent, right? Regardless of the rumors, this is what I want you to go tell everybody, and we are on Facebook Live, right? Regardless of the rumors of what people are saying, me and this man right here, that's my number one man right there. This man is teaching me a lot, okay? And we're going to continue to make Rockfish, along with everywhere else in this community, safe. You mark my words. Nothing is going to come between me and the sky right here. Because God has put us together right. to work together to do his job right. for this community. And that's what we're going to do with the help of your prayers and your commitment to Hope County Sheriff's Office as citizens to help us. We're not perfect. Pray for us. We're going to do the best that we can because we are human beings too. But I appreciate everything that you've done, everything that you're going to do. We're going to rock it out, man. Don't cry. Don't cry. <laughs> We're going to rock it out, I want to say one thing. I'm going to do that for 29 years. I started mm -hmm. in this county. Some of you remember me. Back in the early 90s, I was here. I went to Scotland for about 16. I've been back here about eight. So I've got about 29 years in this game. What I can tell you, last year, we were about 16 people down. Didn't know we lost we lost Sheriff. Okay. But what I can tell you is, and if some of you know me, some of you don't. If I didn't like what this man was doing, I'd walk. Mm -hmm. I'd be gone. Okay? He come in, we sat down and we talked. This agency is through the roof now with people. I think how many positions are we down? Four positions down, okay? They're banging the door down. We're four positions down because we're turning people away. They don't need to be, we don't, they don't fit our criteria. Every now and again, somebody will slip through. We deal with them accordingly. We send them on their way. If they don't fit what, what we're looking for, our values, okay? But what I can tell you is, his mind for this county is where it needs to be. If it wasn't, Somebody else will be standing here talking to you now as a chief deputy. Because I, I would I'd be gone. But he's doing the job. Let's give him a hand. And I support him. Uh, uh, we're talking about the uh, drugs coming into the community. Are we talking about I don't know much about the drugs, but I know I lost a brother to fentanyl. Is that what kind of drugs that are getting bad here? So, I don't know. So so just recently in the last I was in maybe the last month or two, that fentanyl is 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 wreaking havoc here. Like almost every traffic stop now, is there some type of narcotic that's being discovered? That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Um we're about to put out a, a big press release this week. I don't want to say yet. And you're gonna be amazed. You're gonna be you're gonna be amazed. You're gonna be really, really amazed. But um our guys are they're our narcotic agents, they're on their job. They're being safe because you have to handle that drug specifically very, very safely because it's highly volatile, meaning a whiff of it can knock you out. And our officers carry Narcan, which is a reversal drug. If they uh, OD or whatever, they go to the house, if they be, if they be EMS there, um, they give this drug intranasally to reverse the effects of that drug. Because when they take that drug in, it causes respiratory depression, causes you to breathe maybe once twice a minute when you should be breathing, breathing anywhere from 12 to 18 times a minute. So our deputies, they get there first, they have this drug in their cars along with the AED, the defibrillators, and they uh, they administer it in their nostrils or whatever. And depending on how much they've in taken, 
It may work or it may not. And they have to work to the paramedics get there, but at least we have a reversal already on board to reverse the drug or whatever. Um, but we, we're on that. We're on that. And a lot of it is a lot of border stuff that's coming over that we can't control. We just got to do the best that we can here. Um, Captain Sanchez, Corporal Stevenson, um, K-9 Officer Swartz, um, I appreciate everything that you guys do because I dare not leave here without acknowledging the rest of uh, my deputies that are here. You guys are doing an awesome job. We appreciate you. Rock Trish appreciates you. Okay, appreciates you. Let's just keep striving for it, going for it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. I, think, uh, I, think we've, I think we all want to be mighty proud tonight to have a yes. uh, substation in Rockfish and thanks to Rockfish Fire Department. Chief Rock and their board, and the fire chief, Mr. Todd Wood. We appreciate that. And it's something that's been long coming. So it's great to know that we've got uh, protection down here, and hopefully everything's going to work out to our good for the citizens of Rockfish. One thing I do have is uh, we have a golf tournament on September, on April the 30th. That's in memory of uh, Sandy's father in law, Belton Jones, and all the living and deceased to the Alzheimer's patients. A very important announcement, our last meet and greet prior to the election primary on May the 17th will be held on Tuesday night, uh, May the 3rd. We encourage all the candidates that are watching on Facebook Live, and I know there's some watching, we encourage you to be here, the judges, the Board of Education, the county commissioners, the sheriff, race, even though the sheriff's with us tonight, this was all about community business. He came to enlighten us on the things that he's going to do is to make our community safe. Mr. Brock, do you have anything? I do. Are you, is I everybody think, through? Anybody yes, got sir. a question? We're done. We're done. Oh, we're fixing to go home. <laughs> but don't forget May the 3rd. May the 3rd. And I, I want to say one thing. Kim, yeah. I've been after you for two years to come to this meeting. Yeah. <laughs> I've already got her. <laughs> and I wish more people would do like you. Just come on. That's what we need. We need participation. Folks, I'm going to tell you. You can hear what the sheriff's <clears throat> office has said. You can, and these volunteer firemen, they see a lot of stuff. Our community is changing, brother. And it's not like it was. Somebody said, well, I don't want change. It doesn't matter. I'm sorry. I've been here 64 years and it's changed. It's getting worse. But thank you, Mr. Brock. We certainly appreciate y'all coming. Our sheriff department, the folks from the state, even though they had to leave a little early. Uh, where is the gentleman that spoke a while ago? I guess he's gone. But we appreciate him coming. Uh, especially our shirt department that comes down and enlighten us on things around Rockfish that they're going to be doing. They can do them with our help, and they can't do them without a lot of it. A lot of times we can, we can open the door and open the gate for things that they can do and take care of. But anyway, we thank you all for coming. We hope you learned a lot tonight. I know I did. So let's go home and have a good night, and we'll meet again later on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.